Hello, and welcome to this video for the Physics 132 lab, which will introduce the ideas behind what are known as Monte Carlo methods. So let's begin with some motivation and a little bit of history. There are some problems in science that are so complicated that they just can't be analyzed by formulas that you can write down on a piece of paper. And this is particularly true in biology and the health sciences because the problems are so complex. So one example is the folding and shape of proteins. This is famously a very difficult problem. So how do you solve such problems? Well, one technique is to use probability and random numbers and computation. These methods are known as Monte Carlo methods, and they're named after the town of Monte Carlo in the country of Monaco, which is on the coast of France. It's a little tiny country, which is famous for its casinos, hence the random numbers. And they rely on using computers to simulate the results. And these were first really used in the Manhattan Project in a serious way. But now they're used in all fields to understand systems like cost overruns or time overruns, finance, like, you know, are commodity prices going to go up or down, resource exploration like oil and other minerals. All of these different fields use Monte Carlo methods now to gain a deeper understanding of complex problems. As a first example of how Monte Carlo methods work, we're going to do something maybe a little silly and comp calculate pi. So to see how we can do this using Monte Carlo, consider a square that's one meter on a side. And inside, we'll call this direction x, the horizontal, and the vertical direction y. And inside the square, let's put a circle. And since the circle is one meter in diameter, it has a radius of half a meter. Now the area of the circle divided by the area of the square is pi r squared over s squared. In our case, the radius is 0.5 and the side of the square is one. So the area of the circle divided by the area of the square is going to be pi over four. So now let's use a Monte Carlo method to determine the value of pi. So how do we do this? First, we throw a dart or in a computer, we choose a random X and Y value. So in this first dart, we got a very large x and a very large y. You can see it down in the lower right there. Then you check to see, is the dart inside the circle? I mean, if you're doing physical darts, you can actually see. But if you're doing calculation, well, you do x squared plus y squared. And is that less than 0.5? If so, it's inside the circle. If not, do nothing. Throw another dart. Repeat the process. This dart is inside the circle, so we add one dart for inside the circle. If you do a bunch of darts, the number of darts inside divided by the number outside will be the area of the circle divided by the area of the square. Think about it in terms of probability, right? You're throwing darts at random. The number of darts that land in the circle divided by the number of darts that land in the square is going to be the ratio of their areas, which we've just seen as pi over four. And if you do this for a bunch of darts, a bunch of dots in a computer, you can see that once you get to a couple of hundred thousand, you start to get a relatively reasonable approximation for pi. So that example is a little silly. Let's do something a little more probably interesting and a biological example, folding proteins. This is, a, like I said, a famously difficult problem. So here I'm gonna take you through how you can use Monte Carlo methods to solve protein folding. The example I'm gonna go through here is a simplified version of the method described in Earl et al. So what, how do you start? Well, you correctly connect your atoms in some random guess shape, a straight line. I mean, if you can make a better guess, maybe you do, but if not, straight line is fine. The next step is choose a random atom and move it a small step in a random direction. So I'm going to move this green atom just up and to the right just a little bit. Now go and calculate the energy. Is this energy lower than the energy that you, that you started with? If the answer is yes, leave the green atom where it is and start over. Choose a different atom. So now we're going to take the blue atom and get it to move. I'm going to move it just down and to the right a little bit. 
So we've now moved the atom, we go through, we calculate the energy. You'll actually see how to do this in the third unit of the lecture portion of this course. And let's say this time that no, it doesn't lower the energy. Well, you don't automatically move the atom back. You choose a random number between zero and one. And why do you want to do this? Well, it has to do with, with energy, right? For all we know, our goal is to get to the lowest possible energy state in this situation down here. But for all we know, moving the blue atom got us here. So that's not the lowest possible energy state. So we choose a random number between zero and one, and then we compare that random number to the percent energy difference. So the new energy minus the old energy divided by the old energy. And if the random number is less than that percent difference, keep it anyway. Might be the wrong move, but that's okay. You keep it anyway. Let's start over. Now move, let's say, let's move the yellow atom repeat the process and we'll say again that this does not lower the energy so we'll choose a random number calculate the energy difference and if my random number is greater than the percent change in the energy difference then you don't keep the move and you move the atom back and you repeat this process hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times and it may seem weird but you actually can end up with the correct answer so here is a result of that in action. So you can see here the, the, this Monte Carlo simulation of a polypeptide chain. And he's, the author starts with all the atoms in basically a straight line and then runs the simulation. And you can see they're jiggling around at random as the atoms wiggle around and he's moving each atom randomly and the computer's calculating the energy is this higher is this lower sometimes leaving it even if it is higher and you let this run for hundreds of thousands of computations and ultimately it settles down into what is actually the correct answer for this polypeptide chain So in summary, Monte Carlo, or MC as they're sometimes called, methods use random numbers and, and simulation and computers to solve problems that cannot be solved in any other way. And they're used in basically every field now. Physics, biology, geosciences, finance, you name it. They all use Monte Carlo methods to solve complex problems. In this lab, you're gonna get started by using a Monte Carlo method to propagate uncertainties. This concludes this video.